Welcome to Serwin's Accounting Lectures. Today, magkakaroon tayo ng pen and paper video problem solving patungkol sa Lecture 06, Reclassification of FBPL to FBOCI. Actually, nasa description ng video lecture na ito yung mismong problem under discussion. Kung gusto mong sagutan ng solo at balikan ang lecture na ito kapag tapos ka na, mas mabuti. Kasi ang accounting ay natututunan not by mere listening but by you doing the problem solving. Pero kung may sagot ka na nga, simula na natin. So before we try to read the problem, balikan lang muna natin ano nga ulit ang reclassification rule pertaining to investments. Okay? Ang banggit dito, all equity investments cannot be reclassified. Only that investment can be reclassified. Bakit nga ulit? Sabi kasi, equity investment held for trading or measured at FBPL cannot be reclassified by reason of consequential requirement of PFRS 9. Sinabi kasi ng standard na bawal. Kapag ka ikaw ay naging FBPL by consequence, pag ikaw ay trading by consequence na equity instrument, ikaw palagi ay FBPL. So bawal nang ma-reclassify. Same goes through Equity investment measured at FBOCI by a revocable election cannot be reclassified simply because the election is irrevocable. Pinili mo kasi yan at sabi mo hindi ka na pwedeng magpalit because the election is irrevocable. That's why there will be no reclassification for all equity investment. While for debt investment naman, ang banggit dito, debt investment measured at amortized cost can be reclassified to FBPL or FBOCI. That investment measured at FBOCI can be reclassified to FBPL or amortized cost. That investment measured at FBPL can be reclassified to FBOCI or amortized cost. So what have you observed? Lahat ng debt investment, kahit FBPL, FBOCI, amortized cost, can be reclassified. Isa lang yung dagdag na rule. However, debt investment measured at FBPL by a revocable election cannot be reclassified simply because the election is irrevocable. May mga pagkakataon kasi si FBPL napili siyang ganyan because ginusto mo at ang pagkapili mo ay irrevocable na. So kung sakaling yun yung dahilan, bakit siya naging FBPL? Therefore, it cannot be reclassified. Now, let's go back to our topic. Ang sabi, FBPL to FBOCI. Eh, sabi mo, sir, bawal i-reclassify kasi nga FBPL cannot be reclassified because of irrevocable election. Tama naman yun kung ang FBPL ay irrevocable election ang naging dahilan. Pero may iba pang cases kung saan ang debt investment may be an FBPL pero hindi irrevocable election. Let's say by default, FBPL talaga siya. So therefore, FBPL na siya sa simula hindi dahil sa irrevocable election. Okay? That's why it can be reclassified. Okay? Magsagot na tayo para mas ma-appreciate pa yung problem. Basahin muna natin siya. Okay? So, ito ang ating ano, tanong. On January 1, 2025, Kenneth Company purchased 6% bonds with a face amount of 4 million. The bonds mature on January 1, 2030 and were purchased 3,530,000 to yield 9%. The entity classified the bonds as held for trading and is payable annually every December 31, the interest. Okay, so given ang fair value and effective rate ng 2025 and 2026, on December 31, 2025, the entity changed the business model to collect contractual cash flow and also to sell the bonds in the open market. So ito yung date of reclassification. On January 1, 2026, the fair value of the bonds did not change. So here are our question. Number one, what is the interest income for 2025? What amount of unrealized loss is included in profit or loss for 2025? What is the interest income for 2026? What amount of unrealized loss is recognized in OCI for 2026? And also, prepare journal entries for 2025 and 2026. Kung ako yung nagsasagot, lagi kong inuuna journal entries kasi ang sabi, kapag ka maalam ka mag-journal, lahat ng tanong kaya mo na rin namang sagutan. Okay? So magsimula tayo sa requirement number 5. Mag-journal muna tayo. Okay? Binili niya yung investment nung January 1, 2025. Ayan. Nung time na yun, Ang kanyang face amount ay 4 million pero binili niya na 3,530,000. Sabi, the classification is held for trading. That's why on January 1, 2025, we are going to debit financial assets, okay? Dash FBPL, okay? Amounting to its fair value of 3,530,000 and we are going to credit cash for 3,530,000. Okay? 
Dahil ngayon ay debt investment, pagdating ng December 31, 2025, there will be a collection of interest. That's why we are going to debit cash and credit interest income. How are we going to compute for the interest? Ang basis po niyan is yung face value, the 4 million. And it will be multiplied by the nominal rate, which is 6%. Okay, wala tayong pakialam dun sa yield rate na 9% Dahil tayo nga kasi ay FBPL So we try to solve 4 million times 0.06 will be our interest 240,000 So again, we debit cash for 240,000 And credit interest income for 240,000 This is the solution At dahil nga yun ay FBPL We try to look if there are changes in the fair value So ang sabi Dating 3,530,000 Naging 3,490,000 So 3,530 okay, Minus 3,490,000 There will be a decline of 40,000 Ang tawag doon ay unrealized loss Kasi bumaba So we debit unrealized loss Okay Dash FBPL Yung kanyang measurement And we credit financial asset Dash FBPL Amounting to the decline At 40,000 Okay So yun na po So dahil nga bumaba Let's move on Ano nga ulit ang nangyari On the same day December 31, 2025 They changed their business model Okay Sabi nila Ayaw na nila na for trading They want to collect contractual cash flow And also to sell The bond in the open market Therefore, dahil nabasa mo yan Ang business model na tuloy nila ay FBOCI na Magtitake effect ba siya ng 2025? The answer is no Because sabi sa standard The reclassification date is the beginning of the next calendar year Okay, so let's say in this case 2025 Actually, hindi kailangan na December 31 Naisip nilang magbago Kahit anong date pa yan ng 2025 Ang take effect pa rin naman yan Ay the following year January 1, 2026 Okay, sabi dito Nung January 1, 2026 Okay Hindi naman daw na bago yung fair value Pero still, that will be our reclassification date How are we going to do that? Simple lang We are going to debit Financial asset Okay Dash FBOCI And we are going to credit Financial asset Dash FBPL Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? Tinatanggal na natin si FBPL At inililipat natin kay FBOCI By how much? 3,490,000 So 3,490,000 Okay, bakit po yan? Eh kasi nga, di ba, yan yung kanyang fair value kanina. Yan yung value niya uh, nung December 31, 2025, also nung January 1, 2026. So, yan yung mawawala at lilipat dun sa FBOCI. And what is the rule? Okay? So, basically, uh, kung ano ang kanilang fair value nung simula, yun din yung magiging carrying amount or initial fair value nung FBOCI. Ayan. So, tumuli na tayo. Pagdating ngayon ng December 31, 2026, what are the things that may happen? Siyempre, mangungulik na tayo ulit ng interest kasi nga, bonds yan. So still, we are going to debit cash amounting to 240,000 and credit interest income amounting to 240,000. What is the solution? Answer, same computation nung kanina. Okay? Doon pa rin naman talaga yung cash collection nakabase sa face amount at saka doon sa nominal rate. Okay? Let's move on. Dahil naman yan ay FBOCI na, di ba dalawa ang sources ng income dyan? Okay? Pwedeng true interest and then fluctuation ng fair value kung sakaling tumaas man. Okay? So ngayon, unahin muna natin dun sa interest niya. Di ba sir, nagkwenta na tayo. Pero dahil ngayon ay FBOCI, ang totoong interest niyan ay hindi na nakabase lamang dun sa kanyang nominal amount. But rather, nakabase na yan sa kung ano yung kanyang effective rate. Okay? We try to answer. Yan. So the effective rate for 3,940,000 will be 10%. So yung interest talaga ay ito, nakabase dun. So narito yung ating computation. The effective interest, ayan, Okay, is again, 3,490,000 multiplied by 10%. Okay, pakitaan natin ang calculator yan. 3,490,000 times 0.10, that will be 349,000. Okay, and then the nominal interest, ayan, yung recorded po na interest is the 240,000. Ipakita ko lang ulit yung computation, which is yung kanyang face amount na 4,000,000. 
multiply natin sa, effect, sa nominal rate na 6% At yung kanilang difference will be the amortization Okay? So now, yan, solve natin So 349,000 yung talagang interest Pero ang na-record mo lang, 240,000 Therefore, kulang ka pa ng 109,000 Okay? Lagyan natin ng entry yung amortization. So, we are going to debit the financial asset. Okay? Dash FBOCI. Kasi yan nga yung amortization niya. And we are going to credit interest income. Amounting to 109,000. Okay? Balikan natin ano nga ulit yung logic niyan. Okay? Kasi nga, ah... Uh, Kapag ka FBOCI, yung business model mo, you also want to collect contractual cash flow. Di ba, ang, ang totoong basis ng interest is yung kanyang carrying amount. At ang carrying amount niya on the date of recognition ng FBOCI ay 3,490,000. That's why this will be the correct interest. E ang nare-record mo pa lang ay 240, so kulang ka ng 109,000. Okay? The increase in interest will go to the account title FBOCI. So that's why nakadebit yung 109,000 doon sa financial asset na yon. At since ay FBOCI, dalawa ang kanyang ano uh, ang dalawang ginagawa natin sa kanya. Okay? Kasi yung kanyang business model not only to collect contractual cash flow but also to sell the bonds in the open market. So in short, if there are changes in the market value, we also recognize the change. Okay? So ibig ko sabihin ganito, magkano ba ang kanyang fair value nung simula? Hindi ba 3,490,000? Okay? Oops, sorry. 3,490,000. And then afterward, Words, what happened? We debit 109,000 So we add 109,000 So ito yung value niya ngayon 3,599,000 Anong nangyari? Sabi dito The fair value change To 3,425,000 Therefore We will recognize the loss Kasi ito yung record natin Pero dahil tayo FBOCI We still follow Na kung ano yung fair value Yun yung gagamitin natin Okay? So that's why we deduct 3,425,000 Okay? Therefore, we are going to debit Unrealized loss Kasi bumaba eh Dash FBOCI And we are going to credit Financial asset Dash FBOCI Amounting to 174,000 Kasi nga, may decline dun sa kanyang carrying amount Going to its fair value Ayan So balikan lang muna natin ulit yung mga concepts natin Okay, kapag ka FBPL Going to FBOCI You will follow the rule for FBPL Kung saan FBPL pa siya Let's say nung 2025 Diba? At the moment na ma-reclassify Beginning of the year You will just going to debit the FBOCI And credit to FBPL Whatever is the fair value on the date of reclassification Wala na Kasi nga both of them are measured at fair value Kaya therefore transfer lang siya At pagkatapos mong gawin yun Nung year of reclassification As if normal na lang Gagawin mo yung normal na way Kapag ka FBO, FBOCI Which is You collect cash You amortize And also You change The value of your investment Kung sakali yung fair value niya ay Nagkaroon din ng changes At pagkatapos nun Tapos na yung problem We can now answer Some other questions Ayan, nandito So sabi dito sa number 1 How much is the interest income for 2025? Hindi nga baga At ang sagot natin ay 240,000 Dahil tayo naman ay FBPL Yun lamang nominal interest rate ang ginagamit Question number 2, how much will be the unrealized loss to be included in profit or loss? The answer is 40,000, okay? Which is a loss. ba? Diba? Kasi nga, there is a decline in value from 3,530 to 3,490. Question number 3, how much is the interest income for 2026? Nakakolek tayo ng 240,000 at the same time nag-amortize tayo ng 109,000. Kasi nga siya ay FBOCA na, ang totoong interest is based na on effective rate. From the balance Therefore, the answer would be 349,000 Moreover, how much is the unrealized loss? Sabi sa computation natin kanina It is 174,000 I believe, nasagutan natin natin yung 1, 2, 3, 4 Yun ang mga number 5 Nandito lahat yung ating mga journal entries Okay? Nawa ay meron tayo natutunan dito sa ating simpleng problem Pertaining to FBPL to FBOCI So yun lamang at maraming salamat